he got along with everybody great. Isaiah was was such a good teammate. Um, you know, he wasn't necessarily the guy that played a ton. You know, he got in some games, but he he was the biggest cheerleader on the sidelines. The best possible teammate I could ask for. He was always the most positive guy in every room. He was never like afraid to bring any of the guys aside and introduce himself. Whether we were winning by 20, losing by 20, tied, his positivity was the same throughout the entire game. He was a kid that didn't necessarily get the most playing time, but he was a presence on the bench. He makes it all the way back to the bus where I'm sitting, and he comes up to me and he asks if he can sit with me, and I'm like jokingly like, no, no freshmen got to sit with each other, and he's like, there's no open seats. And he ends up actually crawling over me and sitting in the leg aisle and is completely content, like just an unselfish guy. And I'm sitting there like, wow, like this kid literally is going to sit on the floor. So I end up like, I'm like, dude, get up. And you know, he sits with me the whole bus trip. And like, you really get to know somebody like that. And like, he talks about his family and just home. And it was really, it was like a blessing in disguise that he was down to sit on the floor. His freshman year, we got him in a game up in New York, we're playing in Rochester, New York at Roberts Wesleyan College. And Isaiah scored his first goal, his first collegiate goal. And I mean, he threw his arms up in the air. The goalie went to get the ball out of the net to give it to the official as they always do. And he ran over and grabbed it from the goalie. He, he wanted that ball, his first collegiate goal. Um, and he's, you know, he's crying on the sidelines and hugging everybody. And I mean, it was just, I have never seen somebody so excited to get their first collegiate goal. So that was, that's something I'll never forget. Um, I was in shock, you know, kind of shaking, heart was racing, couldn't catch my breath. And we were out on the field and I actually saw an ambulance pass by and I just got this like feeling of just like sadness and remorse already. I was like, what's going on? And then coach told us to all come up here and then he told us the news. We were you, you kind of like before we knew you kind of had a pit in your stomach like something was wrong and uh, we came, all came in the locker room and coaches ended up telling us um, you know that he had taken his own life and instant feeling is just tears and you can't hold them back I mean I've never been in a room where 35 men are crying and it's a terrible feeling you know we're overwhelmed with emotion and disbelief and shocked and for a while we just kind of sat here and hugged each other and cried on each other and just kind of tried to figure out how to pick up the pieces a little bit from there. At first I was just shocked. I've never really dealt with anything like this before um, but once it set in it really resonated with me just sadness and a lot of confusion as well and I think that a lot of the guys felt the same thing. It's one of my best friends on campus, good friend of ours, I mean teammate, um, but I was pretty confused to be honest as well just because it's something I'd never dealt with that kind of abrupt and just like out of nowhere and so I think that was like the biggest thing was just like a lot of confusion and that's the thing I noticed with like a lot of the guys, it was hard to like kind of wrap or why around it and so that's one of the reasons why I kind of brought like mental health to the forefront for pretty much everyone on the team. Coming in the locker room and seeing their faces was, was awful. Um, couldn't find the right words right away other than, you know, this is something we're gonna have to get through together. We have to be here for each other. Um, you know, nobody's gonna be able to, to handle this on their own right now. It's too much to take in. So we just gotta make sure we're here for each other. And the phone started ringing and I saw it was, you know, British Columbia, I knew who it was. Uh, and it was Isaiah's mom. One of the first things she said was, those poor boys, those poor boys, you know, just to me, I'm thinking this poor mother, you know, this is, this is, you know, her son was in my care and this happened and, you know, and, and her first response was those poor boys, those poor friends. And she was so concerned about the well-being of all the other boys on the team that, I mean, it just blew me away. It was just, it showed, you know, why he was always so caring about other people because of how he was raised. Within the next day, we took off practice and everything else, but the te like, we still all came back to the locker room. We still all went down to each other's houses at night. Like, for us, the teammates and the team bond was like something that, 
you could really look for and we had that and it showed in terms of how everyone bounced back and recovered. Just being around the team, um, I mean the situation is terrible but luckily I had 30, 40 other guys around me to deal with it alongside me. So just having them there made it a lot easier to deal with, which was nice. Each other, I don't know if we, if we wouldn't have had 30 guys, 35 guys, I don't know how some, like how people would have got through it. I mean, it's a tough situation and I just, you know, family, friends, people on campus who you know you, you see but you know who they are but you don't have casual conversations you know asking you how you are and just really just the community showing love for all the guys really helped a lot of people get through it. He was just excited to be out there with his boys so he, he's somebody that we're always going to talk about just about his his love for this game and Lindenwood what it meant to him to be here um, and and you know, basically his positivity, which is, you know, it's crazy to think that somebody that took their lives was so positive, but that's why it was such a shock to us because he was, you know, the most positive, outgoing person. And if he saw somebody upset, he wanted to make them smile and laugh. Two and a half weeks before Isaiah took his life, my line mate, teammate, roommate from Lindenwood graduated in 2007 with me. His wife, who was also a 2007 grad from Lindenwood, um, his wife, took her own life. Uh, they had two young kids like myself, and like I said, this was two and a half weeks before Isaiah did it. So this was, I was still processing that, um, still trying to understand why that happened when, when the whole Isaiah thing went down. So I had been doing kind of a lot of research myself into suicide and, and mental health. Um, so it was, it, it was fresh in my mind, unfortunately, when this happened, um, but it's something that we focused on more and more. I never really thought about it before. I mean, I knew it was a thing, but when nothing happens to you about it, it's kind of hard to have awareness of it. But once this happened, it was a big eye opener and it made me realize that mental health is a huge thing. And I think that more people should be aware of it. The truth is that it happens to everybody. And mental health is real and people feel pain and you know, you, you go about your day and you, you start to pick up on new things and little things after something like that happens. You know, you see somebody having a bad day before you might've just, you know, be like, oh, they're just having a bad day. But now you're like, you know, like they're probably going through something. And even people who don't show emotion that they have, you know, they have their own demons and they have their own, you know, sadness inside and it's just being able to talk to somebody that's what I've that's what I've kind of figured out along the way is that if I can you know lend my voice to somebody you know I can maybe save their lives so I think that that's a huge huge thing until you have something as serious as like a loss it's hard to really kind of grasp your head around it and then since then I think I've really taken it to heart like in terms of mental health is a real issue there is a stigma behind it that it's just, oh, I just feel better one day, and it's just not necessarily the case. And I think I've seen that like, in a lot of the teammates as well, just like it's taken very, very seriously on this team um, and just our team culture, and then along with just around campus and like reaching out to other people. Like I think there was nine or 10 of us that got IK41 tattoos on our legs, so every morning I look down at my leg and just like, I think about like what I can do to be positive for someone else, because you never know what someone else is going through, and I think that is a real stigma that we deal with like today. Yeah, the tattoo is super cool, but it's a story, right? It's something I could show people, and it's like a physical evidence of telling them how, like, about mental health and what it was like, and you know how to deal with it if you do come across it. It's not, it's not wrong. It's not stupid. It's not weird if you're if you're not feeling okay. It's like if you're sick, if you have a cold, you go to a doctor, you get better. You know, if you if you're not feeling right, just talk to somebody. It doesn't have to be a doctor. It doesn't have to be. Your, your best friend, it can just be somebody who has no idea what the situation is, just to l listen. This is something that people do go through and your positivity or your negativity does have real outcome and like effects on other people. And I've used that kind of to always reach out to other people and to always ask what's wrong and to encourage people to voice if they have an issue, if they have something that's the matter or if they just want to have some positive conversation. It is something that does need to happen and I think just the whole man up thing is not necessarily the case. There are some things you just can't man up to. Pretty cliche, but don't judge a book by its cover. But the reason why this is so true is because 
everybody can put on a facade, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean what they're feeling on the inside. So I really want people to get to know other people, build relationship, build connection, and ask people instead of just, hey, how you doing? Like really, like how are you doing? Like get a deeper connection with that person. One thing we say here is it's okay to not be okay. You know, mental health and, and suicide is such an epidemic in this country right now. It's, you never know what somebody's struggling with on the inside. You know, you never know what demons somebody has. And, and one thing we try to tell the guys is that one little comment sometimes, that snarky comment that can be made could really, really touch somebody in a way that maybe you didn't think. Maybe you think it's funny or you think it's, you know, just a, a, a minor joke, but you never know what people are dealing with. Just be respectful of, of people's feelings. You know, it's, you don't want, you know, the last thing you think if somebody, if something does happen to somebody is, man, this is, I, that's the comment I made to them. Um, so just treat everybody like you'd want to be treated. You know, don't, don't have any regrets. So make sure you're respectful of other people's feelings because you really have no idea what people are dealing with on the inside.